Isard's Revenge by Michael A. Stackpole is the last mention of Reich cake that we'll get for a while. So for my third attempt at creating an imaginary cake, I decided to use yet another sauces recipe from her blog. The web address is right here if you feel like making it yourself. She gave two different variations and I chose variation number two, which is right here. The only changes that I made was instead of adding just a teaspoon of cinnamon, I added a spice mix similar to what I used for my second attempt at rice cake, and I'll put that in the description box. So let's get started. All right, so here we go. Here is the finished cake. Yet another sauces recipe was rather different in that you used a cup of all-purpose flour, but you also ground up two cups of walnuts into what she called a flour. It made the texture of the cake in batter form a lot different than I was used to, sort of much more grainy. But while I don't think this will have the bits of nut that the previous cake had, it probably will still have a very nutty flavor considering that there's a huge amount of nuts in here. I also found that while she said to cook it for 50 to 60 minutes, I really only needed 45 and it looked like it was done. Also in the continuing saga of my oven being strange, I purchased a flower nail. They're usually made to make like roses out of icing, but I read online that to help cook the center of the cake better, you can put that in the middle of the cake pan with the nail pointing up before you pour your batter in. And I don't know if it was me actually getting an oven thermometer or me doing that, but the cake seemed to be cooked all the way through. So let's give it a taste. So the cake definitely compared to the second one that I made in a bundt pan did not rise as much, but I'm expecting that to be from the walnut meal. It looks both dense and with air bubbles between the crumbs, which is a good sign. I expect it to be dense, but the air bubbles are always good. And it, you know, doesn't look wet and soggy like the first cake was, which was always a good sign. Yeah, this is nice. You can definitely get the spice cake flavors since I added allspice, cloves, nutmeg, ginger, and cinnamon, but you also get the whiskey flavor too. Yet another sauce in her recipe said that her two attempts tasted far too strongly of whiskey and she thought that possibly needed to boost other flavors. And since I had success with the spice cake flavor in the previous cake, I thought that would work well here and it does. You could definitely taste the whiskey more than the previous cake, which is also nice. Yeah, it has a nice spice. I think from both the whiskey and the spices themselves, which makes it interesting to eat because it's not just like a plain yellow cake. Also, I had to make a slight alteration 
to the glaze recipe, which was basically the recipe called for a quarter cup of water and a half cup of whiskey, which you added after you brought it to a boil. I only had a quarter cup of whiskey left in my bottle, and I decided to add both the water and the whiskey before I brought it to a boil, which may have also lessened that overpowering whiskey flavor because when you let it boil, it does burn some of the alcohol off. So you have the flavor, but not so much of the burn. Yeah, I think this is good. I think this is very tasty. And compared to the other two cakes that I've made so far, I think that this cake, you definitely could put in a tin and give to someone like Mirax gave to Corin in the first book. So here it is, my third attempt at Reich Kate. And I think numbers two and three are definitely worth searching out. The only difficult part about this one was having to grind up the walnuts, but otherwise it was just a pretty easy cake recipe.